So, do you want to start off by just sorry, introducing yourself and telling the viewers who you are? Okay. Um, my name is Greg Hall. I run a Instagram and YouTube account called To Feel Healed that talks about straight edge culture, mental health, and veganism, and a little more about myself. I I write music as much as I can. I've got like a note in my phone that whenever I think of something, I just write it down instantly because I'm always trying to be as creative as possible. And um, besides that, the boring part of me is that I also work in construction. So I'm kind of <laughs> torn between two different worlds of being creative and working for the man. So, so going back to your Instagram account, your YouTube channel, mm -hmm. what is it that's influenced you to create such content around the ideas of veganism, mental health and so on? Okay, so... Um, in terms of mental health, the reason that I wanted to start talking about mental health is because I never really took my own mental health seriously until I was about 21, 22 years old. And I think it was it was the first time that I kind of felt a, like a way that I'd never felt before. Like it's the first time that I felt like I had really burned myself out and I felt like I was just like, I, I felt like I was really at the edge. And it, it it was it was just like a stand like some standard things that like people normally experience just the the stress of university or the stress of college or the stress of work and stress of relationships and I eventually just got to a point where I had never felt this low before it was like so it was so recognizable that I was as low as I could be and it was the first that was the first time that I really noticed it in myself and there had been like a couple times in the past where I had experienced poor mental health. I remember when um, I was 16 and I dated a girl at the same age and I remember that she was, she suffered like greatly from depression. Like right. it, it was the very, very first time I'd ever <clears throat> experienced it, but I never took it seriously because yeah. it wasn't happening to me. Cause at that time, like it was all about me. Like yeah. I, I didn't really think about anyone else. But then when I got to my twenties, then I thought about this again. And yeah. Were so, you almost like a bit naive to I think thing. so, yeah. yeah. I think so, yeah, but um, I'll, I'll knit back into why I believe I was really, really naive because of that. Um, so I dated this girl, and I remember that she was, like, bullied, like, severely every single day for absolutely everything. And due to that, that's what kind of led to her depression. But the thing that kind of really struck me the most that's always stuck with me was that I remember she would be asking questions like, um, why don't these people like me? What What's wrong with what I'm wearing? Like, is there something wrong with me? Am I doing something yeah. wrong? But over time, those questions like turned into statements and it was more like, these people don't like me. Um, these people don't like what I look like. I'm doing something wrong. There's something wrong with me. And I was so naive to it at the time, but like that's like, that kind of, that switch really, really stuck with me. But um, I think that I was really, really naive to it because like I grew up super privileged, like very, very privileged. Um, and I'm not ashamed to admit that whatsoever like I'm grateful for the way that my parents were able to raise me and provide me with so many different options to kind of become a better person but I think that due to that privilege that I was given growing up I was naive to quite a lot of things because normally if you were upset or you're sad you would just kind of plug that void with like money and yeah. material possessions and that and that temporary happiness kind of just keeps getting repeated and repeated and repeated so you're you're not taking note of the things that are actually detrimental to your mental health because you're just plugging that hole with something material, something that suits you at that time, but not yeah. something that can something stay that you. doesn't really help in the long term. Exactly, yeah. Like when you're young and you're you're getting maybe you're getting like bullied at school or something like that, and you think you know what, like I want to get like a new video game, I want to get like a bike or something like that, and they're all things that are great at the time, but they're not yeah. things that kind of affect you in the long run essentially you end up just getting fixated into this mindset of if i continuously if i continuously fill this void with temporary happiness then you don't really realize that you're not filling that void with permanent happiness yeah if you get me. yeah it's more like a crutch opposed to an actual sort of yeah. source of help mm -hmm, absolutely yeah. so um <coughs> that's mental health that's kind of like my primary focus because mm -hmm. like it's it's something that like i've been trained in as well to like become certified as like a mental health first aid right, okay. it's something that really matters so that's kind of the primary focus of it but in terms of veganism i think that um 
I never, again, it was complete and utter naivety where I just thought like I didn't care for anything besides myself. And I just remember about two and a half years ago that it was kind of just one of those like online inductions into like why people become vegan when you start watching like slaughterhouse videos yeah and you end up into like this big black hole of like what happens in the meat and dairy industry and i just i just couldn't go back on it yeah i couldn't go back on it um so that's mental health that's veganism and with straight edge culture um i decided to go straight edge which is when you commit to like a life of sobriety so like no drugs no alcohol no smoking and the reason that i decided to uh, fall into that like I went I went edge at the same time as I went vegan because the two kind of go hand in hand since I'm like part of like um, I'm part of like the hardcore music culture in the UK and that's like two things that are like really prevalent in that scene but um, right. reason that I went edge is because um, my dad's like an alcoholic like a, like it's it's it sucks and it's horrible to kind of see that downward spiral but my dad's an alcoholic and I always the thing that I find quite strange, right, is that when when we're born, like we inherit certain things from like our family, like um, you can get like your you can get like your mom's eyes, or you can get like um, like I don't know, you can get stuff like that. But um, what I inherited from my dad was poor mental health. That was that's what I got given essentially, and can't help that it's happened. But um, I inherited like really poor mental health from him and if he has the ability to become an alcoholic then there's part of me that also has that ability and it's just something that i'm going out of my way to avoid in every single sense so yeah that's pretty much the reason i decided to go edge that made me quite emotional i don't know why it hit so hard (laughs) um (coughs) so have you struggled with alcohol and, and drugs and things or not so much um, I I'd say that I've I've not struggled with it or had any issue with it whatsoever. I've had like the standard experience of dabbling in alcohol and drugs and smoking as like any one that like anyone in higher education mm-hmm. would go through. The standard of like going out like night after night after night and um you're always told that uh, the best conversation is in the smoking areas or <laughs> or you need to try this drink or try my drink yeah. and then at that young age you get into a competition of being like oh i drank x amount this night or oh, have you drank this before oh, i've not drank that so you end up trying all these different things and but no it's, it's never something that i really really struggled with but it was something that was always quite apparent in my life that right. my dad yeah. had struggled with it so so you wanted to cut that out before it could ever be something mm-hmm. a bit yeah. more right? it's okay totally a case of just like nipping it in the bud more than anything else do you sort of believe in advocating that people go straight edge Oh, 100 percent yeah yeah because um i think that um i did an interview recently on instagram actually about a couple of days ago with a page called straight edge interviews and one of the questions in that if i can actually find that was um is there anything like the last question was is there anything else that you want to add and i think the correct the answer that i had to that was probably quite apparent to this one um, I would advocate like going straight edge more than anything else to people because we're always told that like we need alcohol or mm-hmm. cigarettes or like basically like tools of self deprecation in order to enjoy ourselves like we're destroying ourselves inside and out mm-hmm. through the use of alcohol and smoking and drugs and that purely because we're so convinced and so conditioned into thinking these are the things that make us have a better time when in reality it's the company that we're in it's what we're actually doing that dictates whether we have a good time or stuff and whatnot and the point that i had for this guy was uh feeding into these alcohol and cigarette companies continues to allow them to manipulate us into believing that self-deprecation is a necessity to enjoying our lives we are literally killing ourselves to line their pockets and we see no benefit <laughs> wait is the sense in that i get that like that sounds like super elitist and whatnot but it's, it, <laughs> it's new world order exactly but like in in some respect right where is the sense in yeah. ruining ourselves to benefit ourselves yeah that's, that's an interesting way of looking at it, definitely um so i have a question more so in like th- is, is there rules is there like a code of conduct like an invisible sort of thing that you need to follow to be straight edge um where do you draw the line is it where do i wh- draw when, the line when it's like ph- pharmaceutical drugs like uh things that you would just for your own actual benefit oh, that we good. know of, I rate this one. Things that things that are considered good for a um, body. 
I think that if there's things that are able to benefit us medicinally, then yeah, I think that the line can't be drawn there. Um, the way that I've always known it is that it's there's three X's to it. So there's uh, no alcohol, no smoking, no recreational drugs. And like right. recreational is pretty much the key word that's in mm-hmm. there. So if it's medicinal, then it's totally fine. But then you've got people that go as far as... Um, no caffeine, no gambling, no video games or anything like that. Right, okay. Because these are all things that can lead to addiction. Yeah. But then when you take like caffeine, for example, right, um, people always believe that you can become addicted to caffeine, which in a sense can be true. But um, the the group that coined the term straight edge was a band called Minor Threat. And I think the term was coined in 1983 where they wrote a song of that name. And people actually brought the question to Minor Threat themselves. It's like, do you have to abstain from caffeine? And they were just like, no. No. Nah. Nah, it's it's not self-deprecating. It's 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 coffee at the end of the day. Yeah. It's something that some people rely on. Like um like I go through cups and cups a day when I'm at work because that's that's just part of what my life is and that's just part of what my day is. But I wouldn't stop myself from having it because it's not something that it's not something that's killing me. If you get me. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe it is just it's so minute that it makes no But real... maybe I'm conditioned. Yeah. Maybe. maybe. Yeah. maybe it sounds not. like a big conspiracy video now, doesn't it? Like, good. <laughs> We're just going to go down the rabbit hole and never come back. Fighting the, the system against everything <laughs> at this point. But like... Um, so things like gambling then, what are your take, what's your take on that? Um, gambling sucks. Yeah. Totally. Because <laughs> like, I lost so much money in uni because of it. I still remember my biggest win was when I bought myself like a jacket and I thought, yeah, man, I bought this with... I bought this for money that I won in the football and I thought it was a big man but in reality like I just thought it was stupid I just thought it was so <laughs> dumb it's like wait I've put my money into this to try to get something more out I've played the risk against reward and like I've won which is great but like there's people that like lose everything yeah. because of gambling and it's it's so glamorized on like social media and it's you see all these people that are like um, like on Instagram that sponsor their ads and their like oh yeah like follow my tips and whatnot do my seven folds and that of uh, Egypt to score seven goals against Algeria and Wayne Rooney to score from like 200 yards out and that and it's like where have you got the time and the money to do this sort of rubbish to because like there's people that that generally lose their lives because of it and there's people that are benefiting off it so hard and I don't know it's it's an awkward one but yeah gambling sucks man I hate it so we've covered straight edge, we've covered veganism, and we've covered mental health. But going back to veganism, mm-hmm. so now that you're 100% vegan, mm-hmm. what, what do you think the line is with veganism? Okay, Are you 100% vegan? Do you buy leather goods? Do you abstain? I'm not trying to catch out anything. No, no, no. It's, it's more so for, sort of for the understanding, mm-hmm. you know? Okay. I think to be devil's advocate from the get-go, right, I don't think it's possible to be 100% vegan. Yeah. I just, I do not think it's possible at all. It's definitely better than being 100% not vegan. Oh, though. totally. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that if you're able to advocate something as positive as seeing animals as sentient beings and realizing that these are animals that do not want to die, I yeah. think that if you're able to understand that, then that's a step straight away. But... Um, I don't think it's possible to be a hundred percent vegan because there's there's just so many things that can that you can slip up on or so many mistakes that you can make and there's so many things that are completely and utterly out of your control to the point that you might have to um if you wanted to pursue hundred percent veganism then you'd be abstaining from the likes of um like particular pharmaceuticals that could save your yeah. life and and I get that it's animals first then it's humankind second. But there's some times where it's a life or death situation. Yeah. Where so you, uh, are you meaning specifically like things like vaccines? I'd say like vaccines. Yeah. yeah totally. So what are your take on vaccines? Um, <laughs> that if you don't get vaccinated, you don't get autism or anything like that. Like that 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 whole daft anti-vax thing just totally blows my mind. That there's <laughs> that there's Facebook groups just filled with mums that are so focused on. I don't vaccinate my child because. Um, they don't have anything to begin with so why vaccinate something that isn't infected in the first place like the logic is there right 
but it's fucking dumb. Yeah. It's so stupid. <laughs> so, um, but I think that if there is an opportunity to va- to vaccinate, then you should 100% take <clears> it because, yeah, it's, it's just straightforward. You should just do it. But, um, I actually didn't get vaccinated. No way. No, I'm like, no. I, I actually didn't. Fun fact, I didn't I actually didn't get vaccinated. Right. But because I have an allergy to eggs and because it's grown on egg cultures, uh, right, okay. I, I would have killed me instead yeah. of prevented any disease. I would, I would God, have that's just crazy. Died. I never knew that. But uh, I did get vaccinated a few years later mm. um, on a different uh, vaccination or a, a different strand or whatever. Mm. Um, but because the ones you need, the ones that are like really important to have I, I don't really know what they are to be honest yeah so really like do I, to be honest tetanus and and i don't know measles measles all, uh, that all the ones that are kind of problematic right now in america yeah like they all come in three but the mm-hmm. three are really obscure so i ended up being like vaccinated towards like yellow fever and stuff that i'm <laughs> never gonna get <laughs> it's really obscure random stuff you're totally right though there's so many different strands of vaccinations that you can get yeah it's uh yellow fever that's a bit crazy <laughs> Um, but yeah, so vaccinations, you're pro looking after yourself. Yeah, totally. hundred percent. Um, so, and in terms of like clothing and fashion, you abstain from. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd abstain in every, every form of avoiding the likes of like leather goods, advocating for synthetic and man-made goods. Um, like every single thing I buy, like, um, I check everything I do as much research as I I can possibly do. Cause like I'm I'm quite fond of like streetwear and whatnot at the same time. So um, there's a lot of brands that um it can be quite difficult. That make it quite difficult. Yeah. yeah, like um Nike for example have actually made like a really really good step forward and where their product detail is like this massive breakdown now where you actually know exactly what's going into it mm-hmm. and <clears throat> they'll it'll state like that the um the sole is X and the uppers are X and the lowers are X but there's some right, things yeah, that it yeah. doesn't tell you that the part that your laces will go through will be made of new book uh, and stuff like that and it doesn't really make that that clear but if you just do your research then if you yeah. look things up then you, it can become quite easy but there's a lot of brands that i feel could easily make that change towards being like more cruelty free but convincing giant corporations to make these changes <laughs> is something that's the man yeah it's it's something that is seen as being kind of impossible but it can happen like we're seeing brands like um like like chanel example are like no longer using like fur or, or they're not use they're not um running mink farms anymore and but then at the same time like that's that's what we're told we don't actually know that's the case so it's, if that is the case do you think mm-hmm. it's there's sort of like a a weird cultural bias that they still make leather handbags and stuff like that i think there'll always be a cultural bias due to just that there's people that will just never care like what their goods are made of they'll like, like a how, standard of yeah. different animals there's Absolutely. like a hierarchy system mm-hmm. and there'll be people that will see exotic skins against something and they'll think i need that because you won't get that anywhere else or yeah. they'll go to markets abroad and they'll come home with something that is a like a fake Burberry or a fake Chanel bag or something. But like it's still <laughs> made, it's still made from animals, and you don't really know where it's coming from. Like it can be something that's stated as being like an exotic skin, but then it c- it could be anything, and that yeah. that terrifies me. That there is people out there that just do not care to the point that they're so greedy and so fixated on benefiting themselves that they'll they'll never care. And it sucks. Um, so you didn't grow up vegan or anything. You became vegan. Uh, I chose. Yeah. Yeah. So you weren't influenced by anyone other than sort of like the new era of social media and internet and stuff like that. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. To be honest, um, I've been I've been involved in music for like like seven years or something, playing in like loads of different bands and just like generally attending as many shows as I possibly can. And from shows like they were kind of like what my influences were. So like I was made aware of what straight edge culture was from mm-hmm. shows. I was made aware of what <coughs> veganism is at shows. Cause Why can, do you think it's so prevalent in that kind of genre of music? Um, so like the whole idea behind straight edge, right, was back in the 80s, rebelling against the man was taking drugs and drinking as much as you possibly can and smoking and just going against the grain. Whereas straight edge culture was rebelling against the rebellion. Right. So um 
So that became so mainstream that to become sort of anti-mainstream, mm-hmm. you had to do what was almost yeah. originally expected for exactly, you to do yeah. to be mainstream. Mm-hmm. You're, you're rebelling confusing. against the rebellion and it was a means of kind of becoming as pure as pure as you possibly could and alongside that veganism kind of became something that went hand in hand with that where if you're trying to be the purest form of yourself then why would you want to exploit yourself and why would you want to exploit others and then like the connection is made why would you want to exploit another species yeah and the two kind of went really well hand in hand together but like um those things have been carried on since the 80s and they've always been prevalent in punk and hardcore and there's bands that identify themselves as vegan straight edge or straight edge bands and, right okay and that kind of whole thing just it's just grown and grown and grown and now that social media is playing such a huge part in veganism it's um it's it's just kind of gathering more and more momentum to the point that um i've got friends that play in bands that are that identify themselves as like vegan metal yeah or you've got um bands that all identify themselves as just like straight edge bands yeah like you don't know whether they're punk or they're hardcore or they're indie bands or they're like djs or anything like that they just identify themselves as straight edge and that is it that is their identity is there like a straight edge sound like have you heard that they're a straight edge band could you sort of have a preconceived idea of what um, did it sound like it's all done to lyrical content right I think, okay i think it's the lyrical content itself that, so that's um, the selling point it. yeah, yeah that's the thing it's um it's creating relatable content that people can go back to kind of how like um if you listen to the radio like i haven't listened to the radio in years because i <laughs> just decided it was pop when i was younger but you'll see thing you'll hear things on the radio that are about um heartbreak and moving on and <laughs> it's all it's all concepts that people are people in mainstream are so close to because it's something that technically everyone experiences but when you're constantly reminded about that over and over and over again on the radio um these things just kind of like always stick with you and then when it come like they become relatable and you always go back to it and the same sort of thing like happens with like straight edge music and like vegan music it's concepts and terms that you're so familiar with but you're hearing them come from someone else and you think like this person is on the same level as i am like i understand this now like it's it's someone that believes the same way as i do and it's yeah it's almost like you're finding <clears throat> you're finding relatability and you're finding comfort knowing that you're not really alone in it in mm-hmm. a sense all right hmm. um this is maybe a, a very simplistic way of looking at it okay um but usually two sort of groups of veganism it's mm-hmm. like the the group that do it for the animal rights and mm-hmm. the group that do it for the environmental mm-hmm. aspects of it all. What one would you primarily fan? Animals, 100%. animals, yeah, yeah. So in terms of like the other half, mm-hmm. how how do you feel towards it? And I feel that with the environmental side of it, I feel that the the planet is incredibly important, considering mm-hmm. that climate change is something that's something. It's always been something that's existed, and it's always something that has been getting worse and worse over time and the fact that we just have not cared about it pretty much until now is so dangerous and so terrifying but i've always more identified with the the like the animal welfare side of veganism purely just i don't know it's it's quite it resonated with you it's, a it's just something that really really stuck with me <clears throat> like it's you know when like you can't really describe passion it's something that you feel it's hard it's it's hard to Absolutely. put it into words but yeah. it's something that you can properly feel about you like um i can mind driving to work the other day and i drove past one of those like trucks that like transport all the animals in them and i remember just like cows like sticking their noses out of the wee gaps and i mind just feeling like yeah this is shit like why do we live in a world that actually does not see these creatures as sentient beings like it sucks and i hate it but um <laughs> no, it's, it's just, it, it just gets me yeah. so hard i hate it so much and it's i just wish that like more people could kind of make that connection because there's i think the i think the ability to connect is in everyone's head it's a switch that's just waiting to be hit mm-hmm. and it's just something that is just that's within everyone and it really it bothers me that we get people that are saying things like i can't i can't even really describe it but like it, it's it's people that just do not give a fuck about animals and just do not understand that these are creatures that do not want to die and 
there's people out there that are killing these animals purely for our benefit just so we can have like something that lived on our plate but that's not how they see it because the yeah. disconnect is there for them like the, it's, it's something that lived it's something that had a life sat on a plate and i just i i can't even i'm I'm at the opposite end of them now like i i can't i can't compute that whereas yeah. they can was there a moment where we're all sort of switched for you a moment that it all switched um <clears throat> i remember about like two or three years ago when i went vegan and I remember going to Wings in Edinburgh and I used to love going there because that's where me and like my mates from uni used to always go to and I can just remember like getting my food served up to me and that and just thinking like everything on this table is dead and it just it, it totally just struck me there and I just thought nah, nah 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 I can't do this I can't do this I can't do this I can't do this and and then I'm just seeing that like the switch has been flipped for me but everyone around me that gate is still open to them they've just chosen not to walk through it yet and right, okay. i'm just like fuck 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 like what, what is this like it was near it was just such a strange strange experience it's kind of like when your mental like when your mental health hits you for the first time like you when you've never felt that low before and you just feel it for the first time and it's like something you've never felt before and i felt like that when the switch is flicked to become vegan it just like it just it just happened it's just a really, really strange. So it strange. really was like a major turning point. It totally was, yeah. And I think that I convinced myself more and more as people do when they first start doing things for the first time where you find something that resonates with you. You find something that you enjoy and you get so into it that you read yeah. up on it and you practice it as much as possible if it's mm-hmm. a skill or anything like that. And I remember just watching watching like slaughterhouse videos um i remember watching peter videos when i found out that they're that before i knew that they were problematic and <laughs> i remember like starting to read the backs of like food products and drink products and thinking like god there's, there's something and everything and it just really really struck me that there was there was a little bit of something's life in everything and it, it just it really really it just really hit me and I just, I couldn't understand why we would do such a thing. Yeah. Because we would never put ourselves in that situation. It's like with animal testing, like people think like, oh, we need to be able to test on animals to ensure that things are safe and that. But you make the suggestion like, oh, well, why don't we test it on ourselves? And people are like, oh, no. Yeah. So like you, you make the switch there. Like if you had the opportunity to like speak to an animal and be like, oh, I'm just going to jab this into you to make sure it's okay for me. <laughs> you know, for a fact that if they could speak, they would say, no, no, you're not. I don't want that. So yeah. do you do you abstain from like things that you know make uh, impact animals like uh, palm oil and stuff like that? I try my best to avoid palm oil. Obviously, it's quite a um, struggle. Everything, everything has palm oil almost. Absolutely, it's a really really difficult thing to avoid from. But one in particular that I do abstain from is oatly, like oatly milks. Okay. So um, the reason that I abstain from that is that I know that it's oat milk, so mm-hmm. there's no animal, no animal ties in that whatsoever. But when oatly announced that they were to become a zero as um like a zero waste brand yep like that's automatically seen as brilliant great yeah, yeah. but then you've got to understand how do they become a zero waste brand and the reason that they became that is because when only produce their product the waste that they create from from it like the oat residue essentially that is donated to pig farms that basically right okay that basically feed these pigs the waste that comes from Oatly and these pigs are taken to slaughterhouses. Okay. So rather than uh-huh. do- so rather than donating the waste to an animal sanctuary, a place that is actually preserving life, yeah. they are donating a product to something that uh, that now kind of associates them with yeah. murder. Essentially, uh-huh. it's it's a it's a really really shallow tie, but it's something. No, I that, understand. Yeah, it's something that really really gets me and i remember i thought about it more and more and more and i just thought like i don't want to contribute to a brand that is making that conscious decision yeah, it have... seems very regressive for them to do that yeah though, it's, it? a, it's a really really it strange thing bizarre that they've made the choice we could donate it here but we are yeah. donating it there and as sort of a company that's synonymous with mm-hmm. v- vegans and, and doing good and, yeah. and being progressive 
I don't understand. It's, you, how at that board meeting did someone not go, oh wait, maybe that's this is not a, odd, a good yeah. idea. It's like you've got um, other brands like uh, like Rude Health that make the right, they yeah, make yeah. like all the different fancy milks mm-hmm. and that. But they're extortionate, so that alone is a ridiculous reason to buy their products. But they came out with an actual statement saying that they're not making these products because they care. They're doing it for profit and that's it. Right. So like, it's great. It is fantastic that they are providing the market with vegan goods. But, but it's still it's, a company. It's, it's still a business. company that is working on the basis of profit and greed yeah. and growth as opposed to as opposed to um, kind of like morality. Yeah, they're not doing it for the yeah. community. They're doing it because they're a business. Yes, exactly. Which is understandable <clears throat> in a sense that they want to grow and they want to become bigger and they want to have more money in their pockets. But veganism's not about money. Mm-hmm. No. On that kind of note then, what are some companies that you think are very progressive right now and are doing a lot of good stuff for the community? And not just companies, what about uh, people, influencers? People and influencers. Oh, um, where did I put this? You got a list. You're yeah. on this. You knew this I, um, question was coming. I, you were I, ready. I, I came unprepared, <laughs> but I do know some people that I really, really appreciate on Instagram that I have a lot of time for because they're cool people. The reason I want people to come unprepared to this is because I want the raw information from their mm-hmm. brain. I want uncut, a genuine statement. If they can prepare, then they'll write up this and that, and they'll have a bunch of notes, and that's definitely one I want to abstain from. Okay, so the first people that I think I have a genuine lot of time for is um, there's a company called Vegan Kind. Right. So Vegan Kind are like an Edinburgh-based company, and what they do is they basically like organize events <coughs> and they, or, yeah, they organize events. They basically promote veganism and they um, they do collaborations. With the likes of um, Kate Louise Powell, right. who's on mm-hmm. Instagram, she's on Instagram and she's on Twitter. She's essentially the queen of veganism. Yeah, on on Twitter and on the internet, and they've she's done. She's the amazing illustrator, isn't she? She's the amazing illustrator. Yeah, yeah. I got a couple of her prints for Christmas. I'm so happy about that. But um, everything will be in the link in the description. Excellent, as well. brilliant. As well as your own links. Oh, cool! I rate that. Of course. So, um, I uh, vegan kind of like organize all these events where they basically promote veganism through like flyering and like um like beach cleanups right and yeah. whatnot and some of the people that work for them like um my friend on instagram sarah scotland like is always doing incredible things where like she's essentially traveling the world promoting veganism and she has vegan kind as as kind of like a an avenue right, to kind of produce yeah. that so um that's pretty cool that she can do that and it's amazing that Kay is able to do what she's able to do and with the platform that she has like she's constantly fighting for veganism every single day and that's how I found out about Oatly for example mm, that's exa- right. that's where I found out about Root Health also as well other places that I can think of other places and other people oh, do you think it's important to advocate veganism if you're a vegan um I think that it is important to do so but I do not think that it's a requirement to right okay because veganism is not some elite organization <laughs> where you have to you have to put out what you take in Mm -hmm. because i don't think that i don't think that that's the right way to go about it i think that if you can advocate veganism i'd say by all means go for it and i think that you essentially will end up advocating veganism at some point Mm -hmm. like whether it's directly or indirectly where if you decide to go vegan and you go out for dinner with friends that are not vegan, you've got to get the vegan option. You're subconsciously advocating that fact that you yeah, are yeah. that you are feeding into a company and you're creating the demand and they're creating the supply that you want the vegan food. Mm-hmm. And then that makes your friends think like, oh, he's he's getting the vegan food. What an idiot! Or like, oh, he's ordered the vegan thing. Like, oh, that's pretty cool. What's in that? And like, yeah. it, it sparks conversation. It's interesting and it's great. So you're kind of subconsciously doing it. But there's no requirement to be posting all over on social media saying like, this is what happens at slaughterhouses. This is, these are the sort of people that you should follow in that. And, but yeah, if, if you can advocate it directly, then 100% do it. Mm-hmm. I think you should, but yeah, there's no requirement to. But um, I'm trying to think of more people off the yeah. top of my head. Oh no, that's not good. Um, Everyone's uh, headphones just exploded. Oh my God. Um, so right, um, I'm trying to think of more people off the top of my head because usually like it sits in my messages like some people that are really really cool that do really really cool yeah. things 
there's um like fitness bloggers and that as well yeah yeah. they're people that i've became like super fond of because like i appreciate the fact that they're able to kind of go against the grain of you need meat for protein yeah and whatnot and there's (laughs) these people that are like living on like like soy protein or pea protein and like they're actually proving all these people wrong and it's amazing that they're actually able to kind (laughs) of shove it in people's faces and realize that you don't need this thing that is conditioned you don't need this thing that we've been told from birth that you need calcium for like your teeth to grow strong like you need to get calcium from cow's milk or you need to get meat from eating beef and eating chicken and whatnot it's like it's, it's stupid that but there's people on instagram that i follow like the likes of um there is a lad called vegan iron ape who's a vegan athlete and mm-hmm. he's he's got like 14k followers or something like that and he's constantly putting up different means of easy food swaps so you can actually make the, the the conscious decision to swap like your your cow's milk for plant milk or you can swap meats for beans or you can swap processed sugar for fruits or mm-hmm. salts for herbs or butters or avocados and the last is and endless. exactly it goes on and on and then he's got like workout routines and that it's like things that have worked for him and like he's posting a lot of photos of like actually his results mm-hmm. over like a good couple of years and like it's incredible to see that everything that we were taught is not necessarily true yeah like everything Absolutely. that we were conditioned to believe is just not true question everything that's exactly the yeah and um there's other people as well like there's a girl from aberdeen who's called plant-based cat and what she does is um she advocates for veganism and i'm all for it but she's more into like the the vegan food side of it mm-hmm. so like um like, look at, like stuff like that man yeah like just beautiful beautiful food that she's creating and every single thing you is... can't look at that and not think exactly <sighs> like it's amazing that you like people are so conditioned to think i'm like oh yeah what do vegans eat leaves ha <laughs> <laughs> like, ha i can mind making that joke years ago <laughs> to like my partner's sister just being like oh do you eat grass ah. and now I'm the one eating grass and I love it but um like it, it's pe- people like that and there's also someone called Munchie Hunter also a girl that's based in LA that's I'm convinced is gonna blow up yeah I'm so convinced of it but she's constantly posting um Instagram stories and videos of how to of um like basically like vegan junk food essentially right, yeah. and it's that kind of thing that i think needs to become more common like in general yeah because the sort of a uh, misconception is that all vegans eat raw vegan and yep. it's just carrots uncooked and leaves and and all that kind of stuff mm-hmm. which i mean I, i'm sure a lot of vegans do that but there's so many other options no there's so much you can you do you even realize like i can remember um <clears throat> my partner and i went to amsterdam and when we were there, that's the kind of state that veganism needs to be in, like, society. Right, okay. Where to the point that <clears throat> there's not only options everywhere, but there's places that are purely dedicated mm-hmm. to being vegan. And I can understand that that might make people think, like, oh, like, I don't want to eat vegan food. And it's like, well, if you don't want to eat vegan food, then just don't. Like, don't go to these places. Don't Don't pick the vegan option if that's what you don't want to do. But... I'd advise that you do because like eating meat kills yeah. the planet and you're an idiot if you eat meat <laughs> but uh <laughs> bam so yeah there's vegan iron ape there's plant-based cat there's munchie hunter and there's Seda scotland and there's kate louise powell and they're like five people off the top of my head that i would say are very influential and they're the people that i try to communicate with as much as possible are there any influencers in the straight edge community <laughs> Oh, that's a good one, actually. Or is that um, a little bit more rare? I think that in straight edge culture, since it's primarily like a punk and hardcore based thing, your main influences stretch back to Minor Threat, the band that right. actually coined the term. So most of them are musicians. And most stuff of like them that. are musicians. So, um, but I think that straight edge influencers are mainly people that are within like your own scene. So right, um, yeah. when I think of people that are straight edge, I immediately think of the guys I know from Glasgow. Right. So there's no like global leaders or anything like that. There'll be global leaders that are out there. Like there's a guy on Instagram that I know. I should know there's there's a girl on Instagram and there's a guy as well. I think he is called like X Rule X. He's based in Germany, I believe. And he's like covered in like X tattoos and like he's producing like clothing that is vegan but is also covered in like straight edge mm-hmm. propaganda essentially propaganda uh, and then there's also a girl that I, i'm not going to even try to pronounce her name but we'll put her link in the description because <laughs> i don't want to butcher it 
but um she's constantly advocating straight edge culture and i can really really appreciate that it's it's a difficult thing to advocate because it always stems back to why are we putting literal poison into our bodies Mm -hmm. like it always comes back to that point so it's quite a hard thing to advocate like in a nice way kind of like how you can advocate veganism to be like oh look at all this lovely food i'm eating it's colorful it's bountiful it's so easy to make and stuff and like for some people that is veganism food but when it comes to straight edge culture it it comes down to like your mental health your mindset your well-being your yeah. body everything <clears throat> like and it's a really really hard thing to advocate in like a simple way it's kind of like you're going edge because you're you're not wanting to kill yourself yeah. essentially and and sometimes it can have sort of like a quite dark and sinister origin yeah totally <clears throat> and can get quite personal i suppose um and I also with veganism veganism's like oh this is really bad mm-hmm. but then there's an alternative which is really good Mm-hmm. with straight edge it seems like this is really bad and there's no alternative the alternative is just don't do it yeah that kind of thing. Much. it's like um with with like your class a drugs and stuff like that you're always told that, like <laughs> I, I know a that drugs. i know that that's like a big that's like me kind of like like big reach in there but you, you're told when you're growing up like do not take okay do not take yeah. heroin do not take pills and that and you're constantly told all these different things about how you should not put these things into your body because they have the they have the ability to kill you. But why not? No, I'm like, <laughs> exactly. It's stuff like that. It's like, oh, but like you're gonna get the buzz, you're gonna have a great time and stuff. But if you take a certain amount of said drug, you're gonna kill yourself. Yeah. If you take a certain amount if you drink a certain amount of X alcohol, you have the ability to kill yourself. Yeah. If you smoke x amount a day you're speeding up the process of being able to like kill yourself from it you're able to infect your body with something that is promoted as being fun yeah and like Mm -hmm. it's quite sinister that there's actually companies out there where you'll see like you'll you'll see like alcohol adverts like advertising things being like uh, oh yeah buy this look how beautiful this bottle of vodka is and stuff like yeah. that but nobody tells you that like that was such a dig at the uh lgbtq uh smirnoff <laughs> oh no i didn't even know that <laughs> have you not seen it now i've not seen it at all it no. looks pretty cool i always think of like these um like siroc adverts and stuff like that and you already lost me i'm, uh, I'm so not into alcohol that oh man, i like, don't I'm, know any of that i'm so far like i'm so far from it but at the same time like you see it advocates so hard on social media yeah. and stuff that it's like <clears throat> i drank x amount and um i had a great time and stuff like i like totally going into that right i can remember like i'm not good at nights out anymore and it's not because I'm not fun anymore because I don't drink or anything like that. I think it's just that I'm past it. Like, right. I like I like bars, I like pubs, I like being able to hear people and speak to people yeah. and stuff. And I remember I have went human on, connection. Yeah, exactly. Like actually be able to like kind of have the ability to kind of create engagement and actually speak and have an interesting time in that. And like that makes me sound old and boring, but I don't really <laughs> care because I'm quite happy with who I am. But I can remember went on a night out with a couple of my mates and that and i can remember there was this wee group that was stood behind us and like they were so so drunk and i think it was maybe like eight like 8 p.m or something like that and they were already gone they're swaying bumping into everyone and that and there was a wee girl in that group that was just like screeching like just had one of these like voices that you wish you could just put on mute (laughs) and i can mind that one of our mates was like oh you spewed because you drank that you drank this and that and then she was so adamant that she had to defend her ability to drink x amount without drinking and like it's so cringe but at at that time i can understand that it's really important to some people to kind of prove your worth and kind of get validation from your peers that you can do x thing without embarrassing yourself weird flex yeah weird flex okay (laughs) but like i just remember like hearing that and just thinking like I'm so glad that I've went edge that I'm never going to embarrass myself in that sense ever again. I'm never going to put myself in the situation where I'm going to be a nuisance to myself and yeah. everyone else. And Have you ever lost friends because of that? Um, because of drinking that. Um, or because of ab- abstaining from alcohol? Um, there's a good couple friends that I had like a couple of years ago that just like stopped inviting me out because they thought that since I wasn't going to drink... I wasn't wanting to go out right. but in reality just because I don't drink doesn't mean I don't want to hang out yeah so like it's it's a strange connection that people have made with 
if you go out you have to drink yeah and if you're gonna go to like a restaurant or something like that like you're immediately met with like oh um, here's drinks menus and stuff like yeah. that and it's like it's it's just it's so conditioned into believing that that's how it has to be when in reality it doesn't that entire industry is built on the back of alcohol though yeah it's mad so the it? idea of not going out and not drinking i understand where they're coming from to some degree mm-hmm. but it's to turn a profit it's, it's the, yeah. yeah exactly that the only reason in clubs and pubs and i mean everything like that exists is mm-hmm. purely because of alcohol yeah totally so like it just to abstain um, from alcohol it almost seems like you're abstaining from an entire culture yeah. which doesn't necessarily mean you are mm-hmm. i think that that's like <laughs> i think that's the the impression that's given and i think it's something that will never really change i think that alcohol is always going to be there like veganism's like so so important right now and a lot of people are making a lot of noise about it but you don't hear a lot of people making a big deal about straight edge culture because like straight edge culture is so niche and so confined to punk and hardcore but when you go outside that and you mention to someone like um oh, i'm straight edge they'll be like what on earth is that yeah i didn't know like, what it was a lot of folk uh, like we um we did an interview with one of my mates matthew webster who plays in plays in a, an lgbt punk band called gay panic defense he, <laughs> he plays in a band called endless swarm he plays in it just plays in so many bands like you and he's a really really cool guy and like he's quite a like i believe that he's quite an important figure in punk lgbt and when we did his interview we spoke to him about straight edge culture and how he effectively was just ruining his life yeah. through drink and and drug use and it got to a point where like that kind of became his identity where people would be seeing him and be like oh hi you're not out of your face like you're not drunk in that like what's going on with you what's wrong with you and that yeah and he was losing so much of himself due to substance abuse and i can just remember that like um he lost a lot of people and he lost a lot of himself due to like self-destructive tendencies and seeing matthew and speaking to him about those things kind of reinforced my belief a little bit more yeah it was interesting to say the least that i think that there's a lot of people out there that could watch things like that and just think well oh well doesn't make a difference yeah but for him he had to get to that level for mm-hmm. him to realize this is not mm-hmm. like he he reached the line and i get yeah. that the line is different from every for everyone uh-huh. because there's people that would have abused substances just as much as matthew but carried on hence why we still have people that are alcoholics hence why we still have people that are um like drug addicts mm-hmm. And how we've got people that can chain smoke like like seven cigarettes in a row and that, and they're not aware <laughs> of the fact that they're addicted and that. That's just kind of who they've become, and it's almost an extension of their character. But yes. I, I almost so like, what's the word? Like it's rotten. It's it's like a it's like a parasite onto them. Mm-hmm. That yeah, if they could just cut off. Idea. It'd be much easier for them, much easier for everyone around them, mm-hmm. and they're they're definitely benefiting themselves. So, to be honest. I'm pretty straight edge and I don't even know what straight edge was <laughs> like I don't drink or nothing like I abstain from paracetamol because I believe that's the government's way of mind control and nah, I don't believe that <laughs> but uh, honestly against all of it um but I feel like we where we differentiate is that you said you still like just because you abstain from alcohol doesn't mean you abstain from going nights out I do mm. abstain from going nights yeah. out. <laughs> I can, I can understand that. That's maybe because, like, when you're surrounded by people that are like under the influence and that, yeah. that it's just mind numbing and it's know. quite difficult. It's not. It's never been anything that, like, I don't know. I've just never been able to associate myself with it mm. and feel connected in a sense. Uh, like it's a, it's a culture that you've not been able to identify with. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's fair. I get you with that. Um. So uh the mental health aspect seems like it stems a lot from the straight edge sort of world as Mm -hmm. well as your own personal experiences so where do you want to kind of take that into the future um personally i'd like to help myself more because like like there's more to it than just me but like for my own benefit um i've got really bad anxiety like super bad anxiety like i like for me i feel that it's bad but for someone else then it might be totally different because the whole spectrum of mental health is up and down and up and down and it's so anxiety in the sense like whenever i hear about anxiety i'm 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 not gonna lie i'm completely naive okay to all of that um 
when I hear people say they have anxiety, they usually describe it as being like when they meet new people, mm-hmm. it's just they're anxious and not wanting to talk on the phone and stuff, like, and stuff that. like that. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so is that the sort of thing that you experience? Or with with my anxiety, what I feel is that um, I'm an absolute um, I'm a glutton for like time management and that. So basically, what happens with me, in one sense, with my anxiety is that. I can become anxious and nervous and everything as the clock is like counting down to that particular time. Right, okay. So um, as that clock is going down, I'm getting this tight, horrible feeling in my stomach that I can feel is like, it starts here, like at like my throat. And it's almost like there's a pendulum swinging back and right. forth inside me. And it's a horrible feeling, but I feel like it grows and grows and grows to the point that I feel that I'm losing control of yeah. what's going on and like this makes me sound like a complete and utter control freak but in reality it's more the fact that um, I just get so anxious that I'm losing control of what is going on and what I'm doing and I just start panicking to the point that I'm just thinking like is this worth it like what am I doing what is the point of this like are, what's everyone else going to think how is everyone else so calm and chill like why why am I panicking but everyone else seems to be okay like is yeah. something wrong with me then it's it, it goes on and on it snowballs essentially and your mind's just racing yeah pretty much and, like it's going round and round and round but every time that it goes round, the circle gets bigger and bigger and bigger and I'm focusing on like small things you're making me a bit anxious yeah. I don't know like it's um <laughs> When, when it's going around in like a small circle, so you imagine it going like that, and you're just thinking like, oh my God, like I'm going to be late, I'm going to be late, but then the circle gets bigger, and as the circle gets bigger, you're still keeping that same momentum, but you're thinking like, I'm going to be late, at the, whilst you're up here, and then when you're at the bottom, you're just like, oh, what's everyone else going to think? And then it gets bigger, and it's yeah. like, I'm going to be late, um, what are people going to think? And then it's just like, am I going to have enough time to do what I want to do? And then it gets bigger, and it's like, if I don't have the time that I need to do this, am I still going to be able to kind of perform that task as well as I want to and it just like it just it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and it freaks me out and it gets to a point where um I'll be so anxious and I'll suddenly lose control of how I would like things to be and I just I completely stop it's yeah. kind of like you know when you get like that that dull ringing in your ear yeah, yeah. and you're just like it's like white noise and you're just like sat there just like yeah, I just don't want to do it anymore. And like it, it just it totally just puts everything at a stop. Everything in my head that was there, it just cuts out instantly and I'm just like, nah. Is it visible? Like Could someone see this oh, going easy. through your head? Yeah, yeah. like um I used to be fantastic at like putting a face on. I used to be really, really good at it, but it's gotten to a point now where like I just don't hide it anymore. Yeah. Because before I would hide it because I'd be very ashamed of it. But now I'm kinda just like this is kinda who I am and if you don't like it then there's the door yeah. post, whatever <laughs> and if you're able to kind of see past that and be sound and help someone that is generally having a crap time because their mental yeah. health then by all means stay how do you help how, how do i would, help that no no i mean more so how do people outside you help how do you as or is it just best to um, leave you to it or do you know like I think that it's it's different for everyone, but my personal way of dealing with it is um like firstly for myself, like I take a good couple of days to get over things. Like right. I'm I'm hypersensitive, it's really stupid. Like I'll probably be driving home right and I'll be thinking about this, thinking like, did I say the right thing? Did I do the right <laughs> thing and that? But then when it comes to like my partner and my friends and that, um, rather than doing this whole thing of like asking like a hundred questions, like I've specifically said to them, if I'm acting like this then please just take my mind off it and like talk to me about right. something that like I'm interested in or something that like I care about but isn't linked to the thing that has made me anxious in the first place because I want to be taken away from something that has made me feel a particular way by talking about something that is unrelated and something that yeah. generally interests me if you get me <laughs> absolutely mm-hmm. um it seems I always think when I talk to people I always feel like as hard for me to be like oh this is so interesting because mm-hmm. it, it sounds like i'm so detached but in some sense i am detached and mm-hmm. i don't I, i've never been able to understand sorry like i suppose it's the, just the outlook of other people mm-hmm. totally and uh but yeah to hear this it's it's opening up new it's like almost triggering things and being like oh wait i've just realized this and that you know what i mean that's kind of like the joy of being detached is that if you are detached then there's so much that you can kind of open yourself to because yeah. you've never had to experience that sort of thing. Kind of like how I, 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 it, it took me till like early twenties 
to realize that like my mental health sucks yeah because i'd been growing up just filling these voids of sadness with temporary happiness i didn't know any different and then when i got to my 20s i'd be like you know what like i've never felt like this before and there's nothing temporary that's going to sort that and yeah i think that's that's the great thing about being detached is like there's there's opportunity to learn there's opportunity to attach yourself to things oh interesting this has been a solid hour we've spoken for it doesn't, seem, hour, doesn't seem like an hour but we've spoken for an hour so i mean i feel like we've covered not just the surface but quite in depth a lot of mm-hmm. subjects so is there anything that you want to kind of close off with anything you want to discuss finally? um anything that i want to discuss how did you come across veganism uh my girlfriend yeah yeah oh fair enough very straightforward <laughs> <laughs> Um, I thought this was going to be like a rabbit hole sort nah, of thing. I don't, I don't have, she told me no about good, it. That's it. No good stories. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Um, and that she came across it through watching that documentary. What's it called? Oh, um, Cowspiracy. Cowspiracy. Yeah. yeah. Cowspiracy is heavy, but totally worth watching. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Any closing mm-hmm. words? Anything you want the viewers to know? One thing I wanted to ask you, right, yeah, is that ahead. you never really realised that you were straight edge. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you feel about that now that you know? Um, is it is it made it any different that like a label can now be applied to it? Well, or? actually, now that you said it, I, I kind of want to look more into it mm-hmm. and really understand the That's full cool. community and the culture behind it. Because yeah, I don't, I don't drink, don't smoke, don't take drugs. Mm-hmm. Um, what was the what was the ones that more in depth ones? I've never gambled, but then oh, I'm not um, old enough to really gamble. Caffeine. Um, I so. I never drank coffee till about last year, <laughs> so I was and uh, I kind of did abstain from caffeine to some degree. I was never mm-hmm. into like caffeine based drinks and stuff. Um, so I was almost like the utmost straight yeah. edge without even realizing, <laughs> and I don't even know what <laughs> I don't even know what it was. I think I was more so, I believed, and more like, that's the man, that's how they get you. Yeah. And I didn't even realise, because then you said that was like, the full ideology behind mm-hmm. it, it was like, Rebelling that's against the, man. the rebellion. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah. But then, I feel like I'm just, I'm, maybe I, I'm pretty anxious and paranoid and I have anxiety, mm-hmm. in the sense that, I like, I'll think consciously, this is bizarre by the way okay there's no logical explanation for this. i'll consciously think if i pour myself a glass of water i'll be like this here has fluoride in it this here has this is how they get you <laughs> and i'll think that's that's it you know um but yeah i'll think about that all the time about all different things i'll be that's like fair. there's some world order here new world order stuff mm-hmm. and they're always that's how they get you everything you'll be like reading the when you can read ingredients and it's got a word in it it's like it has six x's in it and three y's in it and you just no one lo- like can pronounce that no yeah. human being can pronounce that I'm like, like who what's knows that? what that actually what is. is that that's yeah. a chemical that's used for for controlling humans or that's to <laughs> keep us anything. dumb man so we eat nah um but yeah that's uh that's i feel like that's how i'm straight edge without even realizing well i'm glad that we've been able to speak <laughs> about it and kind of connected more than yeah, it's, we would it's ever because nice it's it's kind of cool being able to come to this sort of thing where like you're here to talk to me about things but it's nice that the things that i've spoken about have kind of resonated resonated with you and like i i really appreciate the time and and the effort that's gone into this so yeah Yeah. that's cool well that was amazing to talk to you and i'm i feel very educated by what you said so far um i think it'd be brilliant to talk more about it if you would be up for that one day yeah if you ever want that absolutely um but yeah thank you very much no problem at all thank you as well i appreciate it